Welcome, everybody, to episode 101 of the Steel Toe University podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about franchises. We're going to try to give you as much information, pros and cons, to help you make a good, informed decision if you happen to be one of the people that are in a position to buy or you're thinking about buying a franchise. Um, and of course, with me today is Callie Taylor, co-owner of Steel Toe University. And Callie, you have a very big announcement. Can you tell us all about it? Yeah. So um, last episode was our 100th episode. So we gave away a shirt. So we are announcing the winner for that. And his name is Bryce Watcher or Watcher. I don't know. If you are Bryce, please email me at support at steeltoeu.com and um, I'll be in contact with you to get that shipped out to you. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, we are very excited to be giving away our first shirt. So congratulations to you, Bryce. Um, let us know how you like it. Uh, with that, let's jump into our conversation about franchises. Um so first thing that comes to mind when I think of a franchise, because I've, I've known people that have purchased franchises. In fact, um, a number of years ago, probably now 17, 18 years ago, early on, right, very shortly around the time or shortly after the time I started my business, I actually looked at buying a franchise. And I looked into a number of them and ultimately decided not to. But um Callie, what are your thoughts on franchising, just in general? Is there like something that comes to mind on a gut level? Um, on a gut level, it's it feels um, constricting. Like there's a lot of requirements that you have to meet. Um, you don't have control of your business, which is what a lot of entrepreneurs want when they go into business is to maintain that control. So, um, and it kind of costs a lot of money usually. So, I don't know. Yeah, I think that um, I, I hear I hear those points and, and money being the, you're going to have fees that you have to pay or royalties. And I know a lot of them work in in different ways. And you look at some and you, you're realizing, well, some of these are ten thousand dollar startups and some of these are a million dollar startups. So I, I know on a local level, just looking in businesses in my area, there's certain ice cream brands and brand that are franchises, certain fast food restaurants that are franchises. And I really can see the value in that. I can see like when you attach your name to a brand that's that big and they bring, they're like a marketing powerhouse. All of that's done for you. The systems, and this is the, I think the key benefit is all the systems are done for you. In order to franchise, you have to have like basically a, a book and you hand over this gigantic manual. It's like, here is step by step how to do everything from scrubbing the floors to serving the customers to making the ice cream to mowing the lawns. Um, but that comes at a price, right? Yeah, but I think a lot of people get into business. I already said this, but a lot of people get into business to be in control. And to be able to to determine their future. When you're in a franchise, it's, I mean, you have control over your specific franchise. But on the whole of the, like the whole overlooking thing, you don't really have control. If your franchise goes out of business, then what, what is that? Where does that leave you? I mean, you're, you have nothing because your blank, I don't, I can't think of one, but you're, you're left with nothing. Yeah, I can I, I can see that. And w when it comes to you know you, I mean, you run a multi million dollar company yourself. Um, I'm guessing you don't want a boss. You don't want to be told what to do. Um, unless I'm wrong about that. Um, how do you feel about rules and following ones that don't always make clear sense? Yeah, I I mean, there's such – when you have um, – you know, it's great when you have a system to follow because that makes things easier. But when you can't flex out of that system, when things go unplanned, it just seems really rigid and stiff. Like when things go wrong or different than you expect, you need to be able to shift and move 
immediately. Sometimes you can't wait until you talk to the franchise um, company and be like, well, this is what happened. What do I do now? Like we need to make a decision now because I don't know, the truck's on fire. Like, what do we do? Like, what is the protocol? Can we put it out? Do we let it burn? You know, like sure. um, you, you need to be able to move and react with what's happening on a daily basis. And the rules, while they're good because they keep us, everything moving forward, they can be bad when when you're in a position when you don't know what to do next. Yeah, I can uh, I, I could see that. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a numbers person. And, and I like studying the cost structure of, and of pricing components in the service-oriented industry, so in specifically home services. So we know we have these components of cost where we have our price, our cost of goods sold, our, our uh, profits, and of course our overhead. And I think the general idea is a franchise comes in and says, look, we're going to fast track you. You're not going to have to go down the road of a learning curve. You're not going to have to build marketing out yourself. We are going to do all of this for you. So your overhead, and, and I think where they try to demonstrate ROI is they say, in the normal company, most people, I'm sure, and, and this is where I kind of have a little bit of a problem, but I also get the logic is not off where they'll go into a, meet with a small business owner that may be considering a franchise and say, um, you know, most businesses go out of, go, most people go out of business within their first year. And this is what percentage goes out in their third year or within five years. And, you know, our brand has been around for 25 years, started off family owned. We figured out everything that could go wrong and we have addressed it. And we teach you how to give a repeatable deliverable result uh time after time after time you get uniforms all the, all the logos are consistent so all that brain work that normally you'd have to do uh, up front is taken out of the way for you for a cost and it's a trade-off but what they have sometimes is proof or i i, I would say in this case be skeptical like make sure it's not smoke and mirrors, but they'll show you things like, here are all the franchisees in your state. Maybe some people, some may have larger territories or smaller territories, but we promise you will not have another franchise competitor within 30 miles of you. Here's are the zip codes that you're going to have to serve. And I think for somebody that really is a good technician of their work. Like they get it. They know how to work hard, but may not have the skill set to, or the patience or the time to create systems that will allow them to grow beyond themselves. I can see why people are drawn to it and are attracted uh, to it. But I imagine that while there are some success stories, there's probably some, well, I know specifically of some stories that are not so successful. Uh, some of the things that come to mind, franchises in, say, home service industry would be um, weed control for lawns, for instance, uh, pest control. There's some pool cleaning companies, artificial turf. That's a big one. Um, uh, what do you see would be some of those? They, what do you see would be the draw initially and then how that evolves from a positive we're going to do this experience and somebody take could, taking their maybe their life savings and putting it's like to me it feels like going to the casino but what are your thoughts um i feel like it when you you you're in a franchise like I have <laughs> my whole argument's the same argument. It's all how limited you are. You have no real control over where your business goes. If it goes left or right, it doesn't, you, you have to go straight because they maintain, you know, they want, they want a succinct look, especially if it's a national company, they want the same experience for whatever franchise you walk into or what walks on your property or whatever they want the same experience from everybody. So you can't change anything. So if 
um, if if it's just so, I if it's something needs to be different, you're so trapped in in their system. So I see the system is very enticing at the beginning, like, oh my gosh, I don't have to think. It's just done for me. I don't have to market. I don't have to, I don't have to like train employees. Why you have to train employees, but they tell you how to do it. You don't have to do any of the, like the legwork and the figuring out work because it's been figured out for you. But then you transit, there's a tipping point where it's like, okay, I, I know everything and you get there probably faster because you were told everything. Now I know everything, but here I see it could be better this way if we did it, this little thing different, or this might be a little bit different. Or um, while well, in Georgia, things are significantly different than Minnesota. So like, how do you take that into account when the, the franchise is in, say, um, Florida, you know, like there's just different parts of the country are going to experience different things. So you're limited. And then um, what, what did, what do you really learn by having somebody tell you everything? Like, so say you're um, ABC franchise and ABC franchise goes out. Now what, what have you learned? I mean, you've learned their system. So you could take that into your, into something new but you didn't really learn and make the mistakes along the way to not repeat those mistakes again. So you know what works, but you don't know, I guess, what didn't work before they started their franchise. Yeah, great, great point about what do you learn? Um, Because that's part of, ultimately, that's such a key factor in your success and fulfillment and achievement is your failures. Um, and it's, I'd be very skeptical to believe that a company that says we're going to prevent failures. I'm not saying that all, it, it, they would say those words directly, but that's kind of the concept they're trying to set up is here is a, here's a system where all the failures have been worked out. Now, I'll tell you a very personal story is my grandfather actually owned a franchise. Um, I grew up my, my entire childhood, as far back as I can remember, we had a Pepperidge farm cookie route and not only are Pepperidge farm cookies amazing, they're even better when you're eight years old and they're free. Uh, so I lived on mint Milano's and goldfish. Well, goldfish kind of fell to the healthy side. So after I was done eating the real junky stuff, I moved to the goldfish. But I worked with him throughout my childhood and throughout on summer vacations. And when my mom, you know, after school for a few hours until my mom got home from work, and I learned a lot about that business. They were very, that's a very well run company because the brand is big. And I think where I'm reconciling why I would consider a franchise in my mind would be when there is truly enough brand power in place like Brewster's ice cream, McDonald's, I mean, Preppage Farm cookies, you know, there is a market specifically for that. They are not going anywhere. Goldfish crackers are going to be around with cockroaches after the apocalypse. I mean, those are the two things that I think will survive. Um, However, when you are playing around in the home services business where lawn maintenance companies or pest control companies or, or, or get get traded in and out all the time, there are some in, in insanely creative business owners that have systems in place. And exactly to your point, what differentiates them from a franchise that also has systems in place is they can react on a dime. In a moment's notice, they can change what's not working and move to something that is working. And, and when the seasons are good, when the money is coming in, that's their money. They don't have to turn around and give a percentage of it as a fee to the company. And when the seasons are low and when the economy drops and people suspend elective spending of money, the franchise still gets their 
payments and still get their fees. Maybe not quite as much. Maybe there is something tied to uh, the revenue side of it, but it's in the best interest of the franchise to continue to get their money. So in closing, I'll give my two cent closing thoughts is if you're in a position to, um, no, I got to say one more thing before we close. Another franchise that was uh, very popular when I, I said at the beginning of this about, I don't know, 16, 17, something like that years ago, I looked at franchises and there's a franchise that did gift baskets to, now keep in mind, this is before you could hop online and order a gift basket. Okay. So that was, you know, I am that old. Um, there's a franchise that does gift baskets to every new homeowner that moves into a specified group of zip codes. If you wanted to buy three zip codes, you could. If you wanted to buy 10 zip codes, you could. Each zip code per volume of people cost a certain amount of money. And the key was that they would give you all of the supply. So the franchisor sold and stocked you know, pirouette cookies and bananas and baskets and shrink wrap. And you all you would have to do is send them to new people that lit that had just moved in and they would have things from local businesses in the area. So it also so your money came not from the new homeowner that moved in, your money came from selling local businesses on a lot of the items that they provided so that it would be packed with value for them. Um, I looked at that very briefly and said no, and I don't think I missed the boat on any of that. So in closing, if you're looking or considering a franchise, I encourage you to talk to a number of them across different types of services. It, there, is from a, there are needles in the haystack. I think there are situations where a franchise can instantly give you a business, but it's not going to come without a cost. Um, I know too many people with too many stories that have retired or semi-retired and have liquidated their 401ks, their life savings to invest into something that in one of two things could happen. That something could be great but you're just not running it well. You're not prepared for all of the effort or that something was oversold and it's really not that great. And I'll say specifically when it comes to home services, let's just use mosquito control as an example. What? Ask yourself the question, what would prevent you from going out and getting your own customers? You know, you've got about a year or two of entry of getting your your name in the hat and getting some marketing going. But once you do, you know, a lot of people that are running franchises look back and say, I could have done this myself. And I don't want you to have a story of regretting that. So um, overall, I'm going to say minus down, thumbs down, don't go with a franchise, but that's just a blanket thing. Do your homework. Kelly, what's your final thought on that? My thought would be that if you really weigh the benefits of um, typically, I think they typically have long-term contracts too. So that's one thing to consider. Um, and then what happens when, if you sign a 10 year contract, well, what happens at the end of the 10 years? You're just, you have, you have to sign it again because, or, or you've done all that work and someone else is going to come by it and buy by you and they get the, the franchisor sells it for more. But um, unless you really, really, really don't want to figure things out in the long run, even though it's harder to do figuring it out, I feel like that's the better way to do it. Because like I said, even if you take that route and you, you try to figure it out and it just doesn't work, you've learned so many lessons along the way. So the next endeavor you do you won't repeat them again. You'll say, I've already made this mistake and I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to try it this way this time. So I say, do it yourself. All right. I think we have a consensus on that. Um, well, if you've been listening to this episode on franchising, uh, please leave us your comments. Let us know what you think. And if you're a franchise owner, please tell us if we have missed the boat or the ball. If you are the franchise company, I guess that would be the franchise or, 
um, give us a call. We'll do an interview with you. Love to hear about your franchise. Uh, help change our mind. With that, we are going to wrap up episode 101. Make sure to uh, stay tuned and join us for episode 102, which will be out soon. Thank you, everyone. Have and fun. if you're Bryce watched or email me, support.com. Yes. Congratulations, Bryce. Have a wonderful day.